and also more so it's like she's so young i don't think she even she even understands what mm-hmm. being a woman means like what what it you know what i mean like even me yeah. as a 30 year old sometimes i was like i was some sometimes confused about like my gender identity my sexual identity mm-hmm. like me being being a woman and everything and let alone a child dan gua nggak tahu apakah apakah si orang tuanya even like explain to her that young terus tiba-tiba udah disuruh untuk covering aja gitu loh you know what i mean i have my own interpretation of what islam is because at the end of the day religion and everything is ideology right yes. and ideo- ideology itu kayak uh, dekat sekali dengan personal interpretation and personal interpretation depends on your experiences your everything your upbringing and everything so i i don't see any any reasons why i should be like ashamed kayak orang-orang soalnya orang-orang di um, di internet bilang gua kayak oh my god kita you're not a real muslim you should be ashamed of yourself gitu lu kayak lu ngebikin nama muslim nama islam itu jadi buruk because of your views and i was like no dude you don't understand because you're not me you're mm. not in my shoes so you mm-hmm. don't understand how i think and how i interpret islam for me you know what i mean no and also like this is my confusion right because i also i grew up in the international school system and then moved to the us and everything there were a lot of arabs There are a lot of Arabs from the Arab world. Um, a lot of them wear the hijab. And what I always notice is that everybody got different styles of hijabs. Yep, and that's right. A lot of people wear turban. A lot of people wear niqab as well. There's that, Miss, Miss, Miss Gita girl, there is that one photo of you on your Instagram. The one where it's like, you're kind of like to the side. I'll put it up on screen for those of you that are like wondering. But it's like the one where it's like, it's your hijab, but it's like, it's just your hair, but your neck and uh, is shown. And like, you're wearing, I think like a black turtleneck or something like that. Do you know which photo I'm referring to? I don't it's know. It's a selfie I of you. I take too no. many pictures. <laughs> I love that about you. But no, no, no. There's this one photo of you. And I, I was like scrolling through the comments and everything. And again, it was like all about the neck and all about the chest and everything. My confusion is that particular style of um, hijab that you were wearing in that photo. Ito sering banget. Like you see that so much even in the Arab world. So it's like, I just, I don't get like, what is with all this backlash towards just that? Yeah, I also don't understand either. Okay? Uh, to be completely honest, mm-hmm. Indo-Muslim community, they're getting scarier and scarier every year gitu. I see like again kayak mereka tuh benar-benar merenggut merenggut ya freedom perempuan gitu for, freedom perempuan uh, muslim untuk mengekspresikan dirinya. Terus mm-hmm. they're trying to use um, Quranic phrase, uh, Quranic verse gitu yang bilang hijab itu udah ada particular style-nya dan lu tuh enggak bisa untuk showing your neck and showing your chest and everything. Mm-hmm. Ujung-ujungnya kayak I thought Hijab itu untuk liberating woman for me gitu ya. Untuk for me just liberating like me having having a choice what to wear. Tapi kenapa ujung-ujungnya lo objektifikasiin gua ya? You know what I mean? So this is where it, yes. it makes me confused. Yes. And also we want to hear from you like what does the hijab mean to you? And also uh, out of curiosity like when did you start wearing like uh, covering up with your hijab? In 2015. Mm-hmm. That was like my actually when I was in high school there were like two years period of time where I decided to wear hijab karena kayak uh-huh. gua habis sakit gitu-gitu kan I was like suddenly gua sakit terus kayak sakitnya aneh banget gitu it was like unexplainable kenapa gua sakit terus tiba-tiba hilang aja sakitnya gitu semutin I was like oh I think maybe this is like some kind of sign from God whatever gitu kan gua masih uh-huh. muda kan terus gua decide to wear hijab and then I came to Germany and I decided to take it off terus tahun 2015 gua pakai lagi gitu dan uh, at that point Lucky gue yang pada saat itu masih my boyfriend, he converted. So both of us mm-hmm. kind of like went through this whole religious and spiritual journey together gitu. Terus we ended up mm-hmm. uh, leaning towards like Islam and everything. Nah, terus, ah, I see. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is like, you as a as a as as an individual, you progress, right? Kayak... The thing is like yang banyak orang-orang mencoba um, guilt tripping gua with was like my video. I think it was like in 2018 or 17, I forgot. It was a video of me talking about Rina Nose. Do you remember like this celebrity? She she wore hijab and then she decided to take it off. Terus terus I think like at that time she did not take it off completely. She wore turban and whatever. I forgot. Tapi di video itu tuh gua bilang I don't understand apakah turban itu tuh jilbab atau enggak gitu. Consider as jilbab atau enggak. But then as a person, you you progress, right? You see more people, lu lihat there are more 
other muslimah yang uh, punya like cultural background lain and then you become more and more um apa ya knowledgeable i guess you be, you uh, lu dapetin insight yang lebih banyak lagi gitu dan of course sekarang gua kalau bisa ngelihat ada muslim yang pakai turban i don't give a fuck you know i don't care like she can wear whatever whatever she wants nah orang-orang itu banyak yang marah karena kenapa dulu gue itu bilang bahwa turban itu bukan jilbab sekarang gue pakai turban gitu loh so I guess she want they wanted me those those people who bullied me wanted me to stay the same to stay kayak udah gitu lo tuh lo tuh jadi muslimah yang konservatif aja gitu yang cuma punya satu views on muslimah harus kayak gimana harus pakai baju seperti apa for me it is not beneficial gitu karena at the end of the day me as a as a human being as a individual I want to grow tapi banyak orang-orang ini yang ngebully gue ini yang mereka tuh marah ngelihat gue tuh growing gitu loh and that's what I don't understand gitu. Uh-huh. Growth is one thing. I think this also begs the discussion of like exploring fashion um, as a Muslim woman. Um, I and mean, also I... exploring yourself, you know, like at the end of the day kan lama-lama lu makin mengerti tentang ini agama gue buat apa ya and mm-hmm. what does hijab mean to me dan segala mm-hmm. macam. You grow, you change, you add more mm-hmm. perspective into it, gitu loh. Nah, mm-hmm. tapi sayangnya orang-orang ini tuh nggak ngerti that you as a person, you as a Muslim, you mm-hmm. can grow and you can yeah. add more perspective. They just want you to stay the same. Yeah, and also I feel like at least this is what I hear a lot from like a lot of my Muslim friends that uh wear the hijab. It's like the hijab is also just an extension of yourself, right? So that's where the conversation of fashion comes in. Of kind of like a hijab is meant to reflect you. It's a, uh, not even so much of like who you are as a person and your beliefs, but even just like your style, your your character, right? And it's like there's just nothing. I I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I guess there's nothing in like your religion or any religion for that matter that d- dictates against that. Yeah, because Islam is not a cult, you know. Like Islam is a religion yeah. that allows you to have some kind of freedom, gitu, individual freedom juga, gitu loh. Mm-hmm. Dan at the end of the day, then you know what's funny is like a lot of if you ask a lot of Indonesian Muslimah what was the reason they wear hijab, I guarantee you, I would say like ninety percent of them will say that Disuruh. karena menutup karena menutup aurat itu kewajiban. That's what they would say. I guarantee you. I don't deny it, nor do I disagree. Just I don't care. It's it's their own uh, argument. It's valid as well. It's their own uh-huh. reasoning. Uh-huh. Tapi kaya what I what I'm trying to emphasize here. Not uh-huh. everybody has the same reason why they chose to wear hijab. For yeah, me, I wear I wear hijab not because of aurat, not because I want to cover my neck, my chest, and everything. I don't uh-huh. care about those kind of things. Mm-hmm. You know, because because I don't see my body, although I'm a woman, as an aurat. You know, for me, yes. I wear hijab first, again for inner peace. Like I mm-hmm. find peace wearing it. You know, mm-hmm. um, it just it I resonates with you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. As easy as that, and mm-hmm. also like because I feel um, my religious identity itu is part of me, and I feel like I want to embrace it as well through hijab. This mm-hmm. just this just how I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Terus selanjutnya adalah visibility, you know, like me being in in Germany, being a minority, I want people to see that Muslim women exist and we've been existing since since years, and they just mm-hmm. have to accept the fact that their society is diverse nowadays, gitu loh. Yes, dan absolutely. kita pun kita dan kita pun as a minority, we deserve to have like rights like other white people in Germany. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, Terus mm-hmm. tapi tapi sayangnya a lot of people are trying to invalidate my reasons for wearing hijab. Mereka bilang kan kayak, "Oh, berarti lu pakai jilbab uh, bukan karena Allah dong gitu, bukan karena uh, agama dong. So it's for other people." And I was like, "Bitch, that's my reasoning." You know, like mm-hmm. gua aja enggak denyin I don't deny your reason why you wear hijab. I don't mm-hmm. deny if it's if I agree with that, if it's wrong, if it's right. I don't fucking care. Why can't you do the same to me? You know, just like just yeah. just accept it, you know, because my yes. reasons are valid. Yes. And again, so much of this, it always comes back to like respective interpretation. Um, also, what I wanted to highlight with this discussion was uh, of my Muslim friends' experience of they wore the hijab since they were very, very young. Maybe not when they were like toddlers, but more so when they were like maybe let's say in middle school. So like fifth grade, sixth grade. And then eventually the years go by and then suddenly they're 21, 22, 23. And then they realize like, I'm not ready for this commitment yet. And then they take it off and then it puts them in a really uncomfortable situation of just like, 
I was never ready to wear it to begin with. And that is what is stipulated part of the religion, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. please. Is that you should be ready. Like, it should be according to your own free will and, like, your own understanding. Like, to, to wear the hijab with respect, the, with the respect and dignity that it, that it so rightfully deserves, is to understand how much it means and like what exactly it means right so i think i i, I sympathize a lot with like my muslim friends who you know they they wore it they t- took it off later in life because they were like oh my gosh i'm not ready puts them in a really uncomfortable situation because we live in this society where you know when people know that oh you used to wear the hijab then you take it off but, but and they don't even give grace they don't even grant you clemency to be like oh well you know but she's you know let, let her find herself like she'll she'll wear it again eventually right they just immediately just go on straight to attacking her and her character and yep. just bringing her down down. Yeah, I and mean, it's look just... at what happened to Rahel Fenya. I think like two, three years ago, she took off her hijab, and people just came at her like crazy. Mm. You know, people mm-hmm. bullied her. Terus ada yang bilang kayak ni gara-gara dia cerai ni atau apa. You know, like dude, mm-hmm. you you guys are so fucking rude. And these people, like I said, these people are the same people that mereka tu preaching kindness, preaching like Islam, the same breath while they're insulting Rahel gitu. Like I oh don't. Gosh understand like what they're doing is the most un-islamic thing bitch i'm telling you it's always the people like some of the most vile hate comments that i've ever gotten on instagram or any social media platform you go to their bio you know they're they are somewhere on their bio it says like um, Ada ayat ayat Quran gitu ya. <laughs> yeah, that or it's like some like religious quote or it's like the like um treat uh, um live treat in people kindness. With kindness. Treat people yeah. with kindness. Be the good that you want to see in this world. I'm like bitch, I'm not seeing any good that you're doing in this world. The fuck Exactly. I think I think the quotes they're trying to like project into themselves. Uh-huh. And they're like, uh, "Bitch, I know you're not a good person, so I'm telling you to be uh-huh. a good person." You know, they're they're talking to a mirror, basically. Mm, okay. Um, and oh, this is something that I wanted to touch upon, right? You've I I'm sure you've heard this saying because I think this stems from. I think the source of this is usually from religious texts. We are our brother's keepers. Like I, you hear that a lot. Basically, whenever people are, what people are trying to say with that is it, the responsibility is on women to cover up to, uh, so that males, like the, we, you know, males and their horny gazes don't come at us. Like men don't look at us in a horny way. The responsibility is on us to cover up so that we do not, um, what, what's the word, well, seduce that- these men into um, lusting us and like you know, viewing us in a very overtly sexual manner. Um, and But you don't buy it. Uh, you, know, you know that's a victim blaming shit, right? Oh yeah, well, 100%. 100%. That's what I wanted to discuss is that, please correct me if I'm wrong here this is based off of my what i have been told by friends also just like research that like the quran teaches both men and women to control their gaze it's not a one-sided thing there is literally a uh, there uh, correct me if i'm wrong there is literally a passage in your holy book that explicitly says that for men to control and lower their gaze no you're absolutely correct there's also like a concept of aurat as well for men but we don't hear it often we all we always hear that woman aurat 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 you know you know what there was a point where i really hated to become a woman because like i felt like why do i have to do this so much work why i have to cover myself why i have to see myself as shame you know i feel like growing up in a muslim community people are People teach you to hate your body. People teach you to see like, to hate your sexuality, hate your body. You see like your body as this disgusting thing that needs to be covered. You know, they, I don't know. Kalau, kalau sekarang kan you see a lot of like narrative, you have to love yourself and everything. Tapi growing up in a Muslim community, the message that I got that was taught to me was the complete opposite. And, and now like me, I'm 30 now. That's why whenever like I hear those people like yang kayak, ya Gita, but it's just your responsibility. Lu harus like this whole victim blaming shit. I'm fucking tired of it to be completely honest. And, and I don't even consider it as serious anymore. I see it as a joke because like I'm just so fucking tired of hearing it my whole life. Right. And that's always, it's always promoted under the guise of like, oh, that's what religion teaches us. That's what your religion teaches you when actually like it isn't. It's just indonesian society and just like many societies across the world unfortunately it's just misogynistic yeah, and patriarchy, patriarchal you know yeah and, yeah. Uh, and like they always want to police and punish women instead of holding men accountable for their wrongdoings yeah yeah yeah, that's, yeah. it's an old yeah. tale and again like we as a woman especially mm-hmm. nowadays like a lot of mo- women are uh, have become like more and more woke and they they're smarter now we are smarter now 
Mm-hmm. I mean, now we see we see all the bullshit right away. You know, like we just don't entertain it anymore. Like we don't we don't fucking care. And yeah, you know don't what? tolerate that bullshit what's, anymore. Exactly. You know what's funny? I mm-hmm. I saw an article yesterday. Kalau katanya tahun, I think it's twenty twenty three or twenty twenty five. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Half of the women, itu tuh nggak nggak nikah dan nggak akan punya anak. <laughs> And Half I was of like, the women where? I think in in, in the US, there were. It, it was an American media. Um, you can like fact check it later. Mm-hmm. But I saw that article. I can I can send you the article. And I was like, oh, de- definitely in a lot of like in a lot of developing countries like the U.S. Like definitely like marriage rates and also just like childbearing rates have gone significantly down. Yeah, because a lot of women now just were tired of that shit. You know, like we don't care anymore. Kalau misalnya kita dibilang kayak oh nanti lu akan yang being this lowly grandma in the nursing home. Like yeah, okay, mm-hmm. we don't care. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And th- th- this is this provides a really good transition to their next to the next topic that you're also. I shit you not. You know, I looked you up on Google. One of the first things that came up was like I think it's like Compass or the thick article that came up about you about how you were talking about uh, wanting to be child free and that like blew yes. up into this huge controversy. So I I guess that's like your main two controversy. Versus so like the key job that doesn't cover your freaking neck and chest, and also just like the whole child-free thing, so much so that there's even an article written about you about that. That is insane to me. Um, let's talk about you know the whole child-free life, the child-free movement, and also just uh, along with that, the hyper romanticization of parenthood, especially in Indonesia. I guess let's just start it off with like, yeah, sim- simple question of like, what are your reasons for not wanting children? And definitely for someone like you of, of your background, it is very unorthodox. Why would you want children, Inda? I'm asking you. In this it, economy? No, I, I know. It, I agree with you. My <laughs> followers that they, that know me, they know. In this economy? I can't in this even climate? Take, in this are you climate? kidding me? In this climate, global warming, every global warming and everything, inflation and shit, mama, I can't even feed myself. You want me to feed a child? Exactly. And can you imagine, yeah. like, if if we were to have kids and look at our kids in ten, twelve, twenty years, they wouldn't have any future because mm. the earth is like destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, I I can never. I don't. I don't have even the heart to raise. An individual in this economy. Mm-hmm. I know for even for myself, it's is such a fucking struggle to just like live and survive. I cannot mm-hmm. imagine what's happening to the future generation. Yes, yes. Um, uh, my stance personally for I mean like for for you because I guess like you don't know where I, no we have talked about this before, but I guess just like for the viewers, like my stance on this is I don't know yet if I want little mini indas of my own you know mm-hmm. what i mean like even if i knew and here's the thing like, even if i knew i did let's say i did you know i would like to like raise a child i don't know if that's something that like i will even be financially capable of just i mean look at the financial climate of the world today you know what i mean um yep. money's tough uh, everything is tough like i don't know and i don't know if the world is going to be both economically but also social politically i guess is the word um i don't know if it's gonna be economically or socio-politically fit even to for children to like live and grow up in yeah yeah and also like the a lot of people are asking me lo tuh gak suka sama anak kecil ya gitu makanya lo gak mau jadi parent for Do me you? it's no i mean some babies are cute and some baby are just like <laughs> you know what i mean kayak Ada anak-anak yang nakal dan nyebelin, of course, but there are some baby that are cute as well, you know, like, yeah. it depends on the baby for me personally. Tapi kayak, for me, it's also about, like, being a parent. I just, like, mm-hmm. I don't see it as something that I have to do just because I'm a woman. I don't see the, why is it? Gua gak melihat itu sebagai hal yang interesting gitu loh. Kayak childbearing, terus kayak um, hamil, terus kayak... Yeah. Uh, giving yeah. birth. Yeah, and I don't of course, know why I have like, to go through that, right? No, and also it's like it's just it's to each their own. You know what I mean? Like your, y- there are a lot of women that dream of like a big family with like lots of children, and like you know maybe like for some women like their aspiration is to just stay at home and like be a yeah, and, and more power to them, right? More power to you know I am I am very dead set in like you know part of being a feminist like part of the like the whole point of the feminism movement is to uh, allow women to pursue whatever life that they want to live and that includes both ends of the spectrum whether or not you want to just be a stay at home mom and like raise five kids or you want to be the complete opposite like just raise a bunch of cats and climb up the corporate ladder. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just want to say, uh, since I was a kid, I was like, um, because of course, uh, my mom kept like telling me, lihat ya nanti kalau punya anak, it's really hard to, you know, it's such a struggle and everything. Mm-hmm. Terus, and I was like, if it's such a struggle, why did you have kids, right? That was like my first question, but I I, I didn't dare to ask her. Terus, uh. terus kayak, she kept like telling me that I will be like a mother, that I will be a wife. Mm. Being a wife, okay, I can see myself. At that time, I could see myself being a wife because like I love the idea of like living with your partner that you choose for the rest of your life. I like that idea because mm. I'm that person. I'm that person who just like, I want to be... Like, I don't know, kayak sekarang nih gue sama laki gue, I see him not as my husband, mm-hmm. but as my like partner in life, like my friends. Yeah. Jadi kayak gue senang banget with that idea, you know. Dan dari yes. kecil gue emang udah attracted to that, to that idea. But the idea of like being a mother and raising them like 24 hours um, till you die, basically, because like it's a commitment, it's a full commitment. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, I don't think I would be even like, I would want it. I don't think I'm cut out for that. No, and you know, motherhood is a very big, big, like any any mother would tell you that. Like it's a very big sacrifice. It's a huge commitment. Not everyone is cut out for it. Not everybody wants it. And it's just, it's fine. Exactly. And what's the big deal, right? That's why I, I was like really mm-hmm. wondering, gila ya, gue ngomong gue child free. And then like people were like, oh my God. As if it was like the worst sampai thing ada, ever. Sampai ada artik. <laughs> Artikel kayak gitu, woy. like it's insane. Uh, no, and also, and like, ta- oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 it's fine. Uh huh. I mean, like, uh, intersecting this conversation back into the topic of, uh, well, your religion, I guess. It's like, what does, uh, like, what does your scripture say about children and childbearing? Because please correct me if I'm wrong. Right, but I'm like I I grew up in a very like diverse religious community. I've 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 read a little bit of the Quran. I've read a little bit of the Bible. I've read a little bit of everything. I've done my research about a little bit of everything. And it's like, correct me if I'm wrong. There's no religion anywhere out there, not your religion, not my religion, that dick that forces you to have children beyond what you are financially, physically, emotionally, mentally capable of. That's also my understanding, you know, like, even, like, you, your purpose, like, God creates you as a woman. It's not to bear a child. It's not to be, like, a baby-making machine. Bukan buat, like, nurturing your whole family and everything. It's for you to be who you who you are, like, 100%, mm-hmm. like, to embrace your humanity. Then, yeah. uh, balik lagi, you know, like, uh, the idea of that woman has to have a kid and everything it stems mm-hmm. from like you said misogynistic point of view and also patriarchy yeah, Makanya, yeah again at this point like i am so tired of those kind of narrative i don't even like give a fuck anymore if there's like random people yeah. on the internet yang kirim gue tuh tiap, tiap hari dah. i got like this quranic verses from people like i don't know i cannot tell you how many people came at me yang coba ceramahin gue like pakai hadis ini pakai quran ini at this point, I'm so fucking tired. Like I don't even Girl, care anymore. <laughs> don't even don't even check your DM requests. Like that is a the, the, our people like you and me. Our DM requests is the seventh circle of hell. It just <laughs> That's don't true. don't That's true. don't even don't even check it. Don't even entertain the shit that they say. I mean, yes, it's also like uh 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 what is it? A direct rebuttal? Not no, sorry, not a direct rebuttal, but it's also a challenging misogynistic. Um, patriarchal notions of like the role of women but also like i don't even for the most part especially like now at my age these days i'm only 25 26 sure but like i don't even the way i think of it more is kind of like the ethics of bringing a child because here's my thing right i always say this if not everybody deserves to become parents completely agree there and unfortunately there are so many parents out there that our parents they do not deserve their child so and it's the it, and i want to make this so clear i repeat this over and over again i'll repeat it again right now if you are not okay with the prospects of having a gay child a disabled child a neurodivergent child a child that you know uh wants to not follow your religious values and like does not adhere to your uh, philosophies and worldviews, then don't become a parent because it's also, ugh, Peter, did my mom leave? She left? 
Okay, so now I can say this. Yeah, no, very ironic. We're having this conversation. My mom was sitting like literally right there. But banyak orang di Indonesia kalau punya anak tuh nggak pakai pikir. Completely agree. You know the thing that like, if you ask like a lot of pe- a lot of people that now who become like father or mother, mm-hmm. tanya tanya deh ke mereka what is the reason you became parents. A lot of people wouldn't know how to answer that question. Karena exactly. Kita itu, Other than just like society, oh, I, that's all I've been told. To exactly do. because yeah. because like we are emphasizing so much and we are focusing so much on people who don't want to become parents. Kita tuh mm-hmm. lupa nanya ke orang-orang yang jadi orang tua, kenapa lo pingin punya anak? Mm-hmm. Like and why they always, why do you want to have kids? And even when you do ask them that, what really bugs me is that they always think of themselves. They don't think about the child. That's also the other thing that really irks me is that a, a lot of parents like they just have children because it's what they've always been told, right? But there's also especially in collectivistic societies like us like there is this mentality of like What is it called, Peter? Utang budi? Utang, yeah, yeah, utang, yeah, yeah. Right? But but it's this, like, over, like, just over-pressured, no, sorry, that's not the right word, just kind of like this very extreme pressure and expectation for, like, you, for your child that you brought into this world, like, they owe you. So they need to drop everything for you. Like, they got to give up their dreams and their aspirations. They got to give up everything to serve you, to satisfy you and live up to your expectations and your desires. And uh, it's so selfish and it makes me so, so pissed. And this is definitely coming from a very personal sp- place. And I'm so glad my mom is not here anymore. Holy <laughs> fuck, Peter, that was so awkward. But there is, you know, people need to think more about this sort of shit because there is nothing. Put yourself in the shoes of your child. There is nothing worse in this world than to be born to parents that never even wanted you to begin with, right? Or be like th- whose sole intentions of bringing you into this world was only to serve and benefit them, not even for you. It's for them. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Dan balik lagi kan, you you said the word selfish. A lot of people are calling me selfish for not ha- for not wanting to have kids. Tapi kayak I didn't harm anyone. Gak ada exactly. anak-anak yang gua gak ada anak-anak gua yang gua rugiin gitu. Nobody. I gua gak ngerugiin diri gua, gak ngerugiin orang lain. It's actually the opposite. A lot of parents yang malah ngerugiin anaknya, tapi gak ada orang yang berani untuk ngomongin parents to selfish. Again, like you said before, the out di awal ada romantisasi kan romantisasi you being parents gitu kayak oh you know like I have I give birth to you I have sacrificed myself for you dude you chose this life you I didn't ask adult. for this yeah <laughs> no I didn't ask for this and that's what you giving like you giving me an education you putting a roof over my head you giving me clothes you sending me to school what you mean the bare fucking minimum that you signed up for exactly and that's like yeah. a big narcissism for me like oh my god you mm. chose this life and you wanted to be like showered with pujian and everything exactly exactly due to your and own choice doesn't make girl, sense girl have you ever thought about adoption no. no i just i don't like taking care of things <laughs> yeah yeah wait but you do have cats right no i don't have cats oh you I don't, don't have, have cats pets, i don't have dog nope nope i have plants but i chose like the easiest plants to take mm. care of because Very. because i know myself is that a cactus Uh no, it's like I don't even know the name. I'm, I'm a really a... bad plant mom. <laughs> no, there's this really funny saying that like uh, in this day and age, dogs have become the new children and plants have become the new dogs. Oh yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. No, but even with like for for me, right? Because I still I get like you're pretty set, I suppose, right? You're pretty set on the child free life and like I do not want children. I do not want to take care of anything beyond just myself, and that is hard enough. Um, I am more of like I don't know, right? And if mm. I do, all I know is that I don't want to get pregnant. I yeah. want to adopt or maybe a surrogate. And but even like let's leave surrogacy out of it. Like even just saying that you want to adopt and people over here, they just they it's they cannot shut up about it. Of like and sometimes it's it, it also it rubs me the wrong way. Every time I tell people that I want to adopt, like I'm thinking of adoption, they always immediately at first think that oh it's a joke. Like, oh, haha, that's so funny. I'm like, no, I'm being serious. I want to die. Yeah, it's like, why? Can you, I think, they're not used to the idea kalau ada lo orang-orang di dunia ini yang mungkin pingin, pingin being a parent, tapi mm-hmm. mereka tuh lebih focusing on being a parent and just showering this kid, whoever whoever they are with love, gitu. Karena ada yeah. banyak banget orang yang pingin being a parent because mm-hmm. they want to have a mini-me, right? Mereka yeah. mau punya gen- genetiknya bininya atau lakinya mm-hmm. atau mereka pingin kayak nurunin legacy-nya, whatever, like this whole like selfish narcissist bullshit, in my opinion. 
yeah. they forgot that there are so many kids out there who need our love. Exactly. And that's that's why I feel like people like you are uh, I like the idea that you tell a lot of people that uh, that kalau lu tuh enggak mau enggak mau hamil dan lu tuh enggak mm-hmm. mau uh, maybe like you will adopt because mm-hmm. parenting itu bukan sekadar cuma kayak the whole experience giving birth. Oh my god, my life has changed forever and whatever. Yeah. Seringkali seringkali yeah. parenting itu juga buat anaknya gitu loh. It's not about you, it's about exactly. the kids. Exactly. Every time I tell people that I don't want to get pregnant, and this is th- really annoying because like people know that I'm not religious, but then they always come, they always approach the topic like from a very religious lens of like, you know, God gave you a uterus because it's meant to deliver child to the world. First of all, like, okay, I don't even know. If I, I don't believe, believe in God. In God. <laughs> yeah, no, I I don't know. Well, that's more of an atheist. That's more of an atheist. I'm more of an agnostic. So it's like, girl, I don't even know if I believe in God. Second of all, that doesn't apply to me. Um, third of all, my body, my choice, and it's just such a taboo thing, especially like this doesn't really. Have have to do with religion i suppose but it's just like it's so taboo here in indonesia like for you to be a woman and say that you don't want to get pregnant when it's like yeah. uh, i i i've made episodes talking about this like i encourage you guys um to check the episode up, out with um, featuring lunar and ovisa where we're talking about motherhood the uh, pregnancy is grueling it is painful you could die uh, yeah. fucks your body you change your body forever yep yeah yep, yep. I- I- exactly so it's just and not everybody and- talk about it Yeah, and I guess like just just point being before we move on to like our last like very hot button topic, uh, when it comes to the child free movement, get the fuck over it, you guys. There are people that there are a lot of people already that want to become parents. People like you and me, people like you actually, I maybe should not include me because I'm more of like in the middle. But people like you that don't want to have children, you guys fall in the minority. Like do and do we really need that? Like, do we really need more people in this world? No, we already have 8 billion people. I feel like that's enough. <laughs> that's true. I think that's more than enough, you know, like, and you know what's funny? What I do understand is like, I mean, even if I decide to then, okay, go ping, go, if I change my mind, right? Just go ping, mm-hmm. ping, punya anak. What is it for them? You know what I mean? It's yeah. my life. Ujung-ujungnya yeah. yang beli susu gue, yang, 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 yang racing yang, di gue, gitu. Yang sekolahin gue, yang exactly. mesti hidupin gue juga. It's like, what does this have to do with you? Mind your own fucking business. My goodness. No, that's the thing. That's my like whole, Any anyone that's ever lived in Indonesia or just like, like lived in Indonesian society, they're always like, Indo- you know, Indonesia is very ikut campur, yeah? The, the people. And it's like, yeah, no, it's literally just stay yeah. in your fucking lane. Yeah, stay. itu itu sila, sila ke enamnya orang Indonesia itu ikut campur. Kita suka ikut campur urusan orang lain. <laughs> Okay, last big hot button topic here, LGBTQIA, which again is how I I came to know you from that whole controversy recently with um, Qatar. And actually, I posted mm-hmm. on my I I posted my opinions on my Instagram story regarding that as well. And I think that was the first time like I post a lot of opinions, like political opinions and views on my Instagram story. Um, and mm-hmm. I normally like, of course, some people are going to disagree here and there, but uh, oftentimes it's not nothing too. It, it it's never like oh, most people agree, most people disagree. Like it's usually a mix. When I talked about this one though, so so many people disagreed with me. Like messaging me being all okay. like, yeah, I, like I'm sorry, like at this one I disagree with you for like for once I disagree with you and all that type of stuff, which is fine. Like it's uh, it's it's healthy to be able to have disagreements and um just sit down and have a conversation about them. But yeah, you got a lot of backlash recently regarding that. Uh, let me just wow make yeah. make this open. The worst ended. backlash I've gotten actually. Yeah. Wow. Tell me more about that. Just in general. Before going into the specifics, well, well, the thing is, like, thank God I'm on therapy. If it happened to me like three years ago, I think I would have killed my, myself. It was that bad. Like, so many people came after me, and so many people just made like an IG reels talking about me or an IG post, and they decided to like uh, tag me in that post, wishing that I I would read about them I, I didn't check like I don't care right like um yeah and also like a lot of people came at me on my like YouTube uh, videos just leave so many comments you know I screenshot a lot of things and 
I mean, if you want to see, like, a lot of them are just, like, just heavy stuff, you know, like, uh, telling me to to kill myself, like, telling me to take off my hijab, and just, they're just, like, being vile, which actually, and also, like, I made a joke about, like, a, a girl, uh, so basically, the thing is, like, this is not about this LGBTQIA thing, it's about the hijab thing, so she left a comment on my, um, on my photo wearing a turban, and she was like, udahlah, guys, si Gita ini tuh, Um, emang orang itu nggak mau nggak di, mau diomongin gitu dia tuh selalu bilang dia selalu merasa tuh dia tuh paling benar gitu which of course I disagree karena kayak at the end of the day like me reacting to it ini tuh bukan gua karena ngerasa benar tapi karena the way you were telling me is like you're crossing my boundaries that's why I was angry that's why I reacted you know like I'm at this point I'm so tired of like being violated like my boundaries I've told them over and over again like guys Uh, lu follow gua di social media I made my uh, social media handle being public it doesn't mean that I can be insulted whatever you want you know, I can be harassed whatever you want you have to like respect me too tapi kayak tapi itu kayak di misunderstand into like me cuma pingin bener doang mm-hmm. and I was like dude what the fuck yes. and then I made a joke like uh, lu, lu, lu stunting ya gitu kan I think as a baby you had some kind of like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mental you had problem or something growth stunting yeah Exactly. I, I saw and that one. I was, saw that one. Yeah, it was a joke, and I told my friend about it, and he laughed, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Ha ha, you really said that." And the first first thing that he said was like, "I don't think everybody was ready to see that side of you because, like, mm. a lot of people don't know me, of course, and a lot of people have like this preconceived notion about me, like being this figure, like, oh, hijabi, dia harus say kayak sopan all the time or whatever." But Like you said, I'm just like a regular person. Mm-hmm. Kebetulan gue pakai jilbab aja gitu. I'm mm-hmm. I still curse, I still say bitch and everything. You know, like I'm like, still a regular. Like bitch, don't get it twisted. Just because I got the this hijab, on don't mean that I can't walk you like a fucking dog. <laughs> exactly. That's why like a lot of people were shocked when I when I called this this person stunting. Terus, on top of it, so it came just everything just like mix and mix into like this terrible things you know the stunting part the lgbt stuff yeah. and also the me wearing turban so that's why i told you that's like the worst ever that i've ever experienced uh but again thanks to therapy apparently it worked mm. so i i'm still here i didn't kill myself <laughs> yeah yeah i'm just glad you have therapy because that's the one thing that i don't have and i deal with this shit too may obviously not to the extent that you do uh you have a much larger following than me and that was also like a very hot topic thing but Yeah, at least, at least you have therapy. At least you have, at least you have therapy. Um, my stance on it, I, I didn't, I, I, all I knew from people and from like what I could gather from like just scouring on like Indonesian TikTok and Indonesian Twitter is that um, you agree on like, I, I'm sure like, what, what, what was your, what was your stance exactly? Like, what was your talking point? My talking point mainly was that this is a world cup this is an international event do not host an international event if you are not ready and prepared to host the international people of the world yeah that's also my point okay all right yeah and a lot of people they came they came at me as well like when i posted about this on my instagram talking about like uh, apa sih kayak me, me respect tuan rumah or something like that to like respect um yeah Apa? Yeah, yeah, the host, the host of the, the yeah, culture, the, the culture of the co- host. Yeah, the the culture of the host. Which I think, which I think is a really dumb argument. Karena if you flip the scenario, mm-hmm. um, a lot of Muslims, mereka tuh kayak marah-marah ketika kayak Prancis. And I also talk about this on on my YouTube channel as well. Gitu, mm. ketika Prancis or some European countries yang mereka being Islamophobic, kayak mereka uh, trying to isolate Muslim women from wearing hijab. Gitu, trying yeah, to like the tell Muslim, them to uh, not to not to cover. Hijab ban. Exactly, exactly. That happened, right? And a lot of Muslims all over the world was like, but that's Islamophobic, blah, blah, blah. Like, France, you have to, like, just um, accept the reality that France mm-hmm. is diverse. It's not just as white people, which mm-hmm. I completely agree. That's why, like, I talk I talk about France a lot of time and which I I find it is a hypocr- hypocrisy coming from mm-hmm. them. Makanya pas, like, Qatar banning Um, banning LGBTQIA, like even like the whole rainbow thing and whatever. Support paraphernalia. Yeah, you're you're basically doing the same thing. Exactly, you're doing the same hypocrisy that you've been like crying about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why are you doing that? Then, like you said, it is an international scale Mm -hmm. event, and you have to accept the fact that people coming from all over the country, nggak semuanya tuh homophobic kayak lo gitu loh, nggak semuanya tuh Islam kayak lo yang mereka tuh 
anti sama sama LGBTQIA, other people are not coming from Islamic background as well. You know what I'm saying? And you just have to accept the fact. Kalau nggak mau, ya close the doors. Don't let people to come yes, to your country. Exactly. Our society is so heteronormative, cis heteronormative that we think everybody was cis heteronormative, but that's mm-hmm. not the case. Nah sekarang nih kita udah Uh, being more woke, kita mencoba untuk elevating those voices of people who are not coming from cis heteronormative uh, community. Mm-hmm. Sekarang suddenly those like cis heterosexual people like, kenapa kenapa sih lu kayak mencoba untuk be making propaganda untuk mencoba promoting like, That. bitch, no, they're not promoting. They've been there the whole time. They've been there Tapi the whole time. Tapi selama ini mereka silence aja gitu loh. Yes, exactly. And also, right? I, I I also just thought of this. I think it's just it's so very convenient that you get to cherry pick what political movement and what political agenda yes. should be a, should be allowed to be promoted at a uh, sports stadium, uh, because. Here's what I'm thinking, right? And Peter, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, yeah, you too, like, correct me if I'm wrong. But it's like, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, like people making a, uh, taking the knee, uh, take taking a knee, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, taking a knee at the uh, football stadiums, right? And because it's uh, to show solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement, right? And uh, I'm just, I'm just saying here, I don't know what the majority of like, the Indonesian consensus, like how majority of Indonesians feel towards like or what their opinion is about Black Lives Matter movement and all that type of stuff. I don't More, think they care. I don't think they care, right? Exactly, because we're so far removed. But that's the thing. It's like, so it, it, it's it's so convenient. Like at the end of the day, like whether it's Black Lives Matter when it's or if it's like you know, um, supporting LGBT, like, yes, like they are political uh, movements. Like they are in some ways political agendas, but it's just so convenient. You get to cherry pick which one should be allowed and which one should it. Yeah, yeah. That that's a I completely agree with you. And also like mm-hmm. uh, this behavior coming from Muslim community yang kayak uh, mereka kesannya tuh takut banget karena sekarang oh the gays are taking over. <laughs> itu tuh it it reminds me of like a lot of white people yang mereka um, complaining about us people of color being too loud mm-hmm. karena because they're so used to like not hearing our voice. They're so used to like this the life where Mm-hmm. Our voices are silenced. Terus sekarang kayak kita dikasih platform, kita kita demanding to be like equal. Mereka kayak, oh you're being too loud. Like bitch, we are not being too loud. We're being silenced before, yeah. and now we started to to say something about it. We started to speaking out. Terus exactly. sekarang lu complaining gitu. Exactly. You're just you you're just not used to being the one to dominate every single space that you walk in. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You just have to deal with it. Right? Deal that you're not the center of the world. There yeah. are other people who exist as well who have different identities than you. Yes. And also, um, th- uh, just want to th- throw in really quickly as well of like when you go to a sports when you go to a sports event. Sports is inherently very political. I don't know. Maybe. I'm also not really the person to talk about this. Again, I don't really care about sports, right? But then it's just, there was just so much no, but hypocrisy but, but, regarding yeah, the whole thing. Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, especially yeah. FIFA, right? Uh, they yeah. can just like uh, fuck themselves. But but yeah. I feel like sports and everything, everything is our in our life is also political. And yes, everything talk, is political. We, we cannot avoid it. We cannot avoid it. This is how it is. Like our identities will be political. Mm-hmm. And even like us being a woman, it is political. Yes, our, our existence in, is political. Inherently, even just you being a like cis heterosexual woman, inherently your entire existence is political. So yeah, it is. There, there is a lot of like uh, uh, arguments about like sports should be that one place where like we don't have to tune into politics, we don't have to care about you know uh, political agendas and everything. But we just we go there and it's just a sports game. At, on the one hand, I kind of see where that is coming from. I, I I get it, but at the same time, it's like that's just not the reality. That's very idealistic. Like that's not the reality. That That we live in at least not yeah. the way that i see it right exactly exactly because like individual i mean like what i'm what i was what i wanted to try start to say is like everybody has their own identity you know like you cannot hide it you cannot suddenly become let's be like colorblind we're not seeing race we're not mm-hmm. seeing color you know you Bullshit. can't you can't you can't yeah. exactly um and you know what When it comes to like the whole whatever, uh, I'm talking to the camera right now. Like I'm talking to y'all, my audience, and also Gita's audience. It's like whatever opinions you have about the whole World FIFA World Cup Qatar debacle. Honestly, let's just agree to disagree. We already know most people disagree with us. Like let's just leave it at that, right? You know what? I have this one friend. Shout out to Parker. I'll send this to him. Uh, Parker. He said he said something to me one time, and it it, it always ever since then it's it's stuck with me. 
being gay can be a sin. But just be chill about it or we're gonna have a fucking problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, and I, I want to know, I, I'm sure a lot of people, they would like to know, um, just, I guess, how do you reconcile being a practicing Muslim while also advocating and championing for LGBTQ rights? So I'm agnostic, so I don't people, have that burden. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are very confused about it, so it is a legitimate question. Um, but I don't see it as a burden, right? Like I said before, like, Islam for me is just like me trying to find peace. Mm. Um, it's for you. For me, it's my for me, and mm-hmm. and I don't see the reasons why I have to use religion. Like, ini terlepas dari ini tuh ada di scripture or whatever, right? Okay, I hope that orang-orang bisa mencoba untuk freeing themselves from that particular aspect. Karena apparently you can be a Muslim and it's for you, and apparently I can also use my Muslimness and Islam. To not like ngedosa dosain orang gitu loh. I don't see the reasons why I should do that. Mm-hmm. I just see them as complete human being, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Karena for some reason in my head, I can detach myself from like ngeliatin dosa orang ini dosa ini dosa. Mm-hmm. I I'm in a place where I'm just like focusing on myself mm-hmm. and my spirituality and my relationship with God, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why for some people it's so confusing. Karena, but at the same time, I can understand as well. Karena ada orang-orang yang really take everything like hitam putih aja kan. Like they don't want to see nuances. They just like capek gitu ngeliat nuances. Jadi kayak yeah. misalnya mereka kalau beragama mereka maunya gampang aja udah kayak yaudah ini gue boleh apa enggak, boleh apa enggak, haram apa enggak. And okay. they're just like they're just like gulping everything gitu without digesting it, without thinking about it. Tapi kalau buat gua. I see agama as a way for me to find peace, mm. um, and that's it. That's yes. it. Yes, I find it very interesting how a lot of people, it's this attitude of like they want religion to be straightforward and black and white. Like, no, this is this is good. This is not good. Right? Like that whole sort of like it's they they view it from a very binary lens. I I my opinion, my view of religion, even as someone who is non-religious, right, is that ironically, it actually takes away from the beauty and like, I guess the inherent purpose of religion is that religion is supposed to be complex and it is supposed to make you think and ponder yeah. and that that's the that's the whole point of it. That is the beauty of it as well. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Makanya kayak I don't see the reasons why kenapa orang-orang itu nyuruh gua untuk practicing agama Islam sesuai yang mereka mau gitu. They yeah. that's the thing like with people being online. I don't know like being being a public figure online it's really hard karena a lot of people were trying to like take away your freedom to be yourself mm-hmm. like lu itu tuh selalu didikte gitu like everything about you tuh harus didikte the way you dress, mm-hmm. the way you talk, the way you think. And for me as someone yang enggak mau didikte Mm-hmm. It's really bothering me so much, of so course. fucking much. Of course. Uh, so much so that I needed therapy for that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Kan, dan mak- makanya gue kayak sampai sekarang, uh, my arguments always kalau misalnya ada orang yang datang ke gue and then they're trying to like ngasih verse ini verse itu nasihatin nasihatin, I was like, dude. I don't care how you believe Islam, how you believe religion. Do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Live and not live. Mm-hmm. Just leave me the fuck alone. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. And for them, it is so hard. Yeah. And also, it's not just like, you leave me the fuck alone. It's also, you leave them alone, right? Because here's the thing. It's like, I get I get this question a lot, actually, on my Instagram DMs of people asking me, Ka, am I a bad person? just because I can't support LGBT. And I think this is a very, uh, this is a conversation that isn't held, um, had often enough, where I do believe, and I've had, I've asked, I've asked this of some of my friends, of in another life, if they could support LGBT folks, they would. But it's because they are abiding by certain um, principles that they interpreted from the, yeah, from their religious respective religious texts that tell them that points towards lgbt being sinful and being immoral and all that that it's because they want to follow their religion they can't support lgbt it's like i want to but i can't right and i get a lot of people telling me that i also get a lot of people asking am i a bad person for not supporting lgbt and here's what i want to say about that right is that if you can't support it fine 
but don't go out of your way to intentionally tear it down. I think that's the line that we have to draw like out here, right? You don't have to agree with homosexuality. You don't have to agree with trannish. You don't gotta agree with people being queer and dressing outside of the binary. You don't gotta be, you know, strutting down the streets wearing pussy hats and waving the rainbow flag. You don't gotta do none of that. But, you know, where I draw the line is when they start using religion as an excuse to validate, uh, to validate vilifying and also being violent towards people of the LGBTQ community, to vilify them, to vindic- to vindicate them when they're, and I really don't care what anybody got to say about this, there is no religion out there, not your religion, not my religion, that promotes you yep. basically bullying other people for just being the way that they are and for judging other people for their sins when you got sins of your own. Yeah, exactly. That's also like the question I've been wondering a lot, like, Whose God are you worshiping that make you become this person, you know, mm-hmm. the, this vile person that see others and, oh, look, this mm-hmm. sinner. Oh, look, mm-hmm. this sinner. Like, kok bisa ya gitu? Mm-hmm. You said that lu tengah tenggit salat, lu baca Quran and everything, mm-hmm. but there's so much hate in your heart that make you become this person. Kayak kemana gitu loh. Ketika lu salat, apa yang lu... What kind of verses that you yang lo yang lo preach and everything yang ngebikin mm. lo tuh malah nggak being like the wisest malah ngebik nggak ngebikin lo jadi kayak the nggak bikin lo calm. They it does the opposite and why is it why is it gitu? Yeah. Okay, gua ngeliat for a lot of people kalau mereka udah inherently evil mau agama apapun they will be evil. Period. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, this also, um, whenever I think about this topic, I also think about the discussion of, you know, like whenever they call Islam the religion of peace or like Christianity being a religion of peace, basically like the whole, oh, this religion is a religion of peace. That religion is a religion of peace. And actually, like, I want to get your opinion on this as well. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a religion of peace, the same way that there is no such thing as a religion of like conflict or like, like disruption or, you know, whatever, like the opposite, like religion it's just religion and whether or not and it's also just the unfairness of kind of like you you put the pressure of it's essentially like one person is meant to represent the entire religion like just because like of the actions or the beliefs of one particular person or just like even a group of people that claim that they are a part of that religion and suddenly they're meant to represent the entire religion that's not how it works right but what was the other thing that i wanted to say um a religion of peace whether or not how re- how peaceful a religion is is contingent depends upon the on people. you yes exactly it depends yeah. on you so if you want if you want islam to be a religion of peace if you want christianity or buddhism to be a religion of peace then behave accordingly so that other people that do not come from your community can perceive your religion to be that way live up to your I own completely agree with you expectations yeah I com I completely re- agree with you. That's why like this whole like idea of like a lot of Muslims yang mereka tuh insulting other people, insulting me, insulting mm-hmm. like queer people and everything, mm-hmm. and then they're trying to like do the whole mental gymnastics to justify mm-hmm. their behavior. Terus tiba-tiba all of a sudden, yeah, but Islam is religion of peace. For me, that's just so funny. Like. Mm-hmm. It must be really hard for them, you know, to justify their behavior, and then you know it's. I don't know the whole mental gymnastic. They must be really exhausted, you know, mm-hmm. having to live like that. You know, padahal kayak there's one easiest thing that you can do to represent your uh, the religion that you say is religion of peace. It's like being peaceful, like you said. <laughs> just, just leave them behave. alone. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing is more peaceful than you guys just leaving us the fuck alone. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That's why, like, whenever I think about like getting bullied because like a lot of people kayak, kayak lu kan pakai jilbab, lu kan kok pakai jilbab, and I was thinking, I wear hijab out of it's my own choice, right? Mm-hmm. Tapi at the same, and I'm proud of it, mm-hmm. and I'm proud of my identity as a Muslim as well. Especially like uh, if we're talking about me being here, um, putting it in context. At the same time, kalau misalnya konteksnya itu gua versus the Muslim community in Indonesia, for me, hijab becomes a boomerang. Mm-hmm. Karena kayak, tiba-tiba gue jadi kayak, experiencing the opposite. Karena kayak di Jerman, gue pakai jilbab, gue bingung Muslim, it's so fucking peaceful, man. Like, it's just so peaceful. Ketemu orang yang assalamualaikum gue, it's so peaceful. You know, I feel like there's this sense of solidarity coming from other Muslim. Dan mereka tuh lebih, lebih embracing lo gitu loh, regardless of your 
uh, believe regardless of your differences gitu. Tapi kalau di Indonesia, I felt the exact opposite. I felt like shit lah gitu. Kayak ni gara-gara gue pakai jilbab nih, gara-gara I'm so visible to many people, many Muslim in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Makanya sekarang everything that I do yang mereka pikir itu Um, the opposite of the Islamic value, mereka ngebully gua gitu karena itu gitu. I wish I could be invisible di Muslim community di Indonesia, mm, which is so yeah. funny, you know, because like there's this two exact opposite yang satu Muslim di Indonesia yang satu Muslim di luar negeri. I felt a lot more peaceful di Jerman gitu dan di tengah-tengah Muslim di Jerman dibanding di Indonesia, which is ironic yeah. karena kan harusnya iya nggak sih kalau misalnya lu living among Muslim Community di mana kayak Muslim itu being my, being mayoritas seharusnya theoretically malah that's your place that's your home that should be your home it exactly. should be where you're embraced right? Exactly. Tapi I feel my experience is the complete opposite. Makanya was you know what's so funny? There's so many friends uh, yang dia diaspora mm-hmm. entah dia tinggal di UK atau di Jerman atau di uh, Amerika gitu. Mm-hmm. Tapi dia punya like cultural background misalnya kayak Arab atau Tunisia atau Morocco whatever Palestine or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mereka tuh nanya ke gua kayak, "Gita, why do you still live in Germany? Why?" Mm-hmm. I can understand from their perspective because they're third culture kids, right? They're diaspora, so of course there's the whole racism that they have to deal with. There's also the whole uh, Islamophobia that they have to deal with. Uh, terus what I was trying to tell them is like You know what? Living as a Muslim, as a progressive Muslim in Indonesia, itu juga nggak enak. Serious, yeah. Seriously, yeah. it doesn't mean that Indonesia itu full of Muslim. 80% of the population is Muslim. It doesn't mean it's all peaceful. No, mm-hmm. banyak dari mereka yang malah mm-hmm. have this entitlement of trying to like force you to think like them and to like uh, be a certain way that you're not. Okay, there they love to take away your freedom of being a Muslim. You know. Yes. Um. So. What I was trying to say to them is like, selalu ada struggle di manapun lo berada. Be it like mm-hmm. you being a Muslim in the Western countries, atau you being Muslim in Indonesia, mm-hmm. as a majority, a majority there is always a struggle, and the struggle is always unique. Gue bilang gitu. Emang gre- uh, gas is always greener on the other side. Yeah. But trust me, for me personally, gue lebih suka jadi Muslim di luar negeri di mana gue jadi minoritas. Yeah. I know I have to cope with the whole racism, with the whole xenophobia, with the whole Islamophobia. Tapi for some reason, from that at the same time gue bisa dapetin solidaritas dari muslim-muslim lain bahkan dari orang-orang yang di luar muslim community yang yang embracing gua gitu yang nerima gua gua lebih bisa cope with that gua lebih pingin untuk lebih bisa untuk toleransi dengan hidup yang seperti itu dibandingkan hidup di Indonesia di mana kayak so many muslim are trying to tell me that kita lu dosa lu dosa you not a real muslim i'm so tired of that shit and i don't want to deal with that shit mm, mm, wow Oof, that is a lot. That that is a lot, and also like I just like for me, like I'm not even Muslim. I don't even relate to any of that. You know what I mean? But I I feel for you. I really do. Then that's, and that's very difficult. But you know what? At least you are, <laughs> at least being a Muslim in in Germany is peace is peaceful for you, and that you're enjoying it. Yeah, that's what keeps me like sane the whole time. Seriously, yeah, Kayak dealing dealing with. Indonesian Muslim community, a lot of them, oh my god Capai yang progresif banyak exactly, yang progresif banyak, tapi sayangnya yang kedengeran sama gua, yang yang loud banget, itu adalah orang-orang yang konservatif gitu ya, yang kayak uh, mereka basically the opposite of me yeah. tapi kayak, I have to remind myself, hopefully they're just the minority, tapi sayangnya they're really loud, just loud, yeah and I have to, exactly, and I have to remind myself there's still other Muslims yang baik gitu, yang mereka tuh yang emang generally good person, dan generally Just accepting me the way I am. Yeah, and hopefully people like you and me coming together and making this sort of content and publishing out for um, the Indonesian general public to see. I hope it gets us closer into building a more harmonious and just more progressive. Progressive is not a bad word, you guys. A more progressive and just a more open-minded and tolerant uh, Indonesia. And I, I, I do think I do think that is what we're doing. With this, even though it's just like literally us in our rooms, <laughs> talking to each other in front of like a bunch of cameras, but I think there's gonna be big impact from uh, all of this. And just we're gonna wrap this up over here because this has ha- this has been a very very long episode. Um, there's also like just six minutes left to this um, timed Zoom call. But yeah, I just Gita, thank you so much 
for doing this and for lending out your voice and for being such an amazing representation of the Muslim community. Like, don't 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 give no fucks about what other people be saying about you, girl. Like, you know that you are out here. You are making moves. You are making waves. Like, you are making change and you are inspiring so many young Muslim women in this country. And you are doing such a good job. And I'm proud of you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for like inviting me. Um, karena again, I got so many invitations from a lot of podcasters. Then usually I just like say, no, 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 because I don't think they actually genuinely care about my point of view and everything. Mm -hmm. But I see like you're approaching me with genuinity. You know, you genuinely care about uh, about this whole thing, about this whole topic. Mm -hmm. Then keep doing this, boo. Mm -hmm. period <laughs> and i think that's where we'll wrap this up make sure to like comment and fucking subscribe all you cunts be sure to go follow gita although i'm pretty sure most of y'all already ahead of that and yeah that is it for now you guys Bye 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 bitch bye bitches <laughs> okay and cut here cut here my god peter you look so tired i'm so sorry